Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about NPCs. That is how we can make our NPCs memorable or maybe too memorable. <laughs> so if you don't know, I started a Discord server last week, I guess, and there was a great conversation going on. Uh, somebody had posted, they didn't give me permission to use their name. I didn't ask, I probably should have. Uh, this Basically this sheet, this worksheet that they had for their NPCs. So it, you know, it had like traits like, uh, winks a lot or has dirty hands or uh, whatever the, the thing might be. And I've seen people use this before. I think the first place I saw something like this was uh, the Lazy Dungeon Master book. This is like the older version of it. I very first got back into D&D &D and I thought, this is a great idea. You know, you've got all these NPCs and the characters interact with them. How are they going to remember the bartender? How are they going to remember the blacksmith but if we say well he this one has an eye patch and this one has a gold tooth and that one wears cool boots and this one has a helmet but as i've continued to kind of evolve we'll say uh, as a game master or referee i've put aside this technique and, and i have some reasons for it i think that it, i'm not saying it's not a good technique i think it's really great what i think is we have to just like many things we have to use it the right way in order for it to be really effective that is to say that if you give every one of your NPCs some kind of funky trait, all of a sudden, it's kind of like what I've talked about before. When everything is funky, then nothing is. So I think if we're going to do this type of thing, we want to be specific about who we give these traits to. And not just specific because we think, oh, it'd be cool to give the bartender a peg leg, but the peg leg should mean something on some level to, and I hate to use the word story, who OSR people are young at their screen, but you know, it, it should matter, right? So in other words, if you have a guy that's constantly got rust all over his hands because he's the, the guy that polishes the, the swords and, you know, uh, cleans them or whatever for the, for the keep, you know, and you make a point of saying that, oh, he picks up his glass of beer and he puts it down, there's rusty fingers on it, he touches this, there's rusty fingers on it, that might be cool because they're going to remember that. But unless at some point the fact that rusty fingerprints, whether it be a red herring or not, becomes an issue, then it's just something players are going to write down. And why do they even care about that? What I found is that players care more about the interaction they have with somebody than what they look like. Now, again, this doesn't mean that you don't want to ever do this, but I have a slightly different approach. So I want to talk about that here. And I would love to hear how you do it. Of course, you can jump on the discord. I'll put a link in the uh, in the description there. Uh, it's in the running games thread, I believe. You can probably find it and reply on that same thread. Um, also, I'll just jump in too and say, thanks everybody who already joined the Patreon. That's amazing. I didn't think, I said last week, I'm, I didn't have any content up yet. You know, <laughs> don't join yet, but a few people joined. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll put a link there too if you're interested. The We should get in the Freebooter podcast this week. I've got a couple of adventures I'm going through. Uh, if you are part of the Patreon and you are part of getting the Freebooter podcast, uh, go to that page. There's like a an area in the Discord that you can access where you can put suggestions. So anyways, that was a little side business. But okay, so anyways, we've got these NPCs. Now, I, <laughs> I'm probably never mentioned this before, but my trade, my career, my most of my life, I am a photographer. That is, I take pictures of people uh, for a living. And that's what I've done for a long time. And one of my favorite photographers that I, you know, looked up to when I was learning was Richard Avedon. Now, Richard Avedon, depending on who you talk to, <laughs> could be considered kind of a jerk or the nicest guy ever, just like most people. And I guess that ties into what I'm about to say. One of the things he famously talks about is that he's a, you know, he's a fashion photographer, but also a portrait photographer, is that the portraits that he makes are really reflections of himself and and or what he sees in the person. They don't necessarily have anything to do with the actual person. And I think this is actually an interesting thing, a psychological thing with people. And I started to write this in the Discord, and that's when I decided, well, I'll make a video about this. When we come into a scene, uh, we as people, forget about characters for a second, just people. When you come into a space, you bring with it your baggage, your thoughts, your loves, your hates, your your what you do, right? Everything that you've gone through, you bring to these things. So when you see somebody, you make a judgment. I get that in life, we probably shouldn't do that as much as we do, but you do. You see somebody dressed a certain way. You see somebody who you know has a certain career. You see somebody who speaks with a certain accent and immediately you start to frame them in a certain way, it, a good way or a bad way, maybe a neutral way, right? But everybody does this a little bit. 
So what I like to do with my NPCs is I keep it super loose. I might say there's a bartender. And then when the, based on how the players are playing their characters and the bat, and of course it's much easier in a campaign where you really know their characters, I will play the bartender up to their own biases that they've established as the characters. Now, sometimes I have to use my own judgment on what that bias might be based on the introductions that they give for their characters. So what will happen is I know there's a bartender. I know this bartender's information, but it doesn't matter to me if he blows his nose a lot, if he wipes the glasses a lot, if he has, because none of that's going to matter. He has this information that he needs to give. So whatever feels appropriate to make sure that the player characters interact with him in a way that's going to be positive for them and positive for what is effectively the story we're building together. Those are the traits that I give the bartender. And that's how I operate. I don't just come in with this idea that like, I have a great idea for a character. This is what the character is. The bartender is amorphous until the players interact with them. And based on how they interact with them, that will be how the bartender will be effectively, right? If they come at him really uh, like putting money on the table, like, oh, maybe you have some information for me. All of a sudden, that bartender is going to want more money. When they want more, they're going to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, I'll take that. And, uh, you know, maybe give them some information. And then when they start asking more, be like, oh, you know, looking down at the table for more money, right? But I may have never thought of that until the player characters approach the bartender with that, right? If they approach really in, like intimidatingly, intimidatingly, with intimidation, the bartender will react appropriately based on how I kind of sized up the type of place. It's a rough town that there's a lot of trouble. He's got a battle axe on the wall behind him. He's not going to get intimidated very easily. If it's like a more plush town where there's not a lot of combat, and he's definitely not armed, or maybe he's particularly old or particularly young, he's not going to, he's going to be more likely to be like, whoa, 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 I'll give you the information. Let the players dictate how the scene is or how the person reacts in the scene because that's how you are right you are yourself all the time but if somebody comes at you differently you will be a different person to that uh to that person if that makes sense it's, it's like you hear this a lot too like you'll hear two stories about let's say a celebrity right because that's who we we all think we know celebrities you're like oh yeah no i i met that guy what a jerk and then another person be like oh the kindest person ever well because it probably had to do with how the interaction happened you don't know somebody when you only meet them briefly so I don't take the time to flesh out the NPCs fully. I think about generally, these are the things I think are important. What are their motivations? So a barkeep that's, let's say, a middle-aged man might have a family. He's got a business he's trying to run. He's trying to keep order. His motivation is going to be to keep things calm, to get the player characters in, to make them as happy as possible without losing his shirt and without anybody coming to harm in his business. So if he needs to, uh, you know, call the, the constable, he will. If he needs to just give them free drinks to calm them down, he will. This is not something I figure out up front. Bob likes to give free drinks, whatever. This is something I deal with in the moment. Now, there are some things that I like to have set. Number one, if the person is some, there is some kind of clue there, right? Like maybe they're a doppelganger or maybe they're a snake man or maybe they they are stealing, right? And I can make this little clue with like the, the blowing of the nose or the the dirty fingers or whatever it is, right? There's something else going on. They're robbing graves at night. So I might mention this dirt under their fingernails, right? This kind of thing. If that's the case, I will certainly write that down ahead of time. And this helps a lot too, because remember as DMs, we always feel like we're being the most obvious ever with our clues, but we're usually not. So I've mentioned this before when I talked about describing things. If you rarely describe the hands of an NPC, and then you start describing this bartender's hands, the players will pay attention because they'll know, huh, the DM's describing this bartender's hands. There might be something interesting here. And you might say, well, that takes away some fun or figuring it out. But I got to tell you, they're not going to, if you give them, if you, if you describe everybody's hands, they're never going to figure out the bartender's hands. Almost never. I'll say, I can't 100% say never, of course. The other thing that I'll have up front is combat stuff. Like I'll have an idea. Like I'll write something like bartender as normal man or if i don't write at all then most people are you know doing air quotes are normal man which is like a human basically and that's jet that's my base my baseline i don't i'm not a huge fan i mentioned this before about these modules where like the bartender is a 17th level ranger and the the you know the, the cook in the back is a, a fifth level dwarf paladin or something you know it, most people in my adventures are normal humans unless they are or dwarfs or elves or whatever unless there's a reason for them not to be 
in which case I will note their combat stats because I want to know that up front just in case. I won't get super deeply into it, but I might be like fourth level paladin. And then if they get into a fight with them, I'm going to say, well, what would a paladin, you know, have for a weapon? Probably a sword. Okay, so he's got a sword, he's got armor, whatever. You know, it's like I don't even figure that out up front unless I'm describing it because it's not relevant. If the paladin comes in the town fully armored and arm, armed and armored and flips his helmet up and has a whole thing, that's because he's a main character that I'm trying to get the players to look at. In that case, he's fleshed out. If he's just Joe Fighter walking in the door, I'm not going to bother. He's just a guy. I just want to reiterate that I'm not saying the idea of having a list of NPC traits that are random is not cool and fun. It is nice to kind of fill the players' heads with beautiful scenes, but just keep in mind that when you do that, they may not know where to look. If you give somebody too much to look at, they'll see nothing. So I think if you're going to use these pre-made lists, be sure to either have them be relevant to the story or only give them to key NPCs so that it doesn't become like everybody's got something. Because as soon as you have that, they will stop paying attention has been my my experience. And I'll just point out that very popular meme you see with the players like focusing on this like uh, one person while there's like somebody else over here and it's like fully fleshed out NPC, the person they're ignoring, and then somebody I just made up two seconds ago and they're focused on that person. To me, that's not a problem because I don't fully flesh out anybody until the players get to them. It requires a little more improv. You need to know your world a little bit. You've got to have some baseline thoughts of like, okay, the average person in this town or the person doing this is going to have this reasoning. And then you can find yourself doing it uh, better and better or easier and easier, however you want to say it, as you go on. And boy, does it cut to prep time. And when somebody says, oh yeah, the guy with three thumbs, you'll remember who it is because there's not that many people out there that have all kinds of weird, interesting traits. All right, so what do you think? How do you do it? Do you make these lists of traits and give them to all the different NPCs or have them ready to roll up at each time to make as many as possible of your NPCs memorable? Or do you keep most of them as plain person until they become something relevant to the story the characters care about, then flesh them out like I do? Let me know which one you do. If you've never done either or whatever and you want more information, all that other goodness, make a comment below. It's always great to keep the conversation going. I did mention earlier, because I mentioned Discord, there is a Discord. You can follow the link in the description. I also started a Patreon, so if you do want to support me there, I appreciate that very much. But you do not need to be part of the Patreon to join the Discord. So jump over there, join the conversation, and I'll talk to you soon. Here's something I found on the web. According to library... Alexa, stop.